All right, let's finish up chapter one with our final two examples. Um, let's do intercepts and symmetry again, and then just go back to circles a little. So let's look at um, the graph x equals absolute value of y minus 9. Um, we could graph it, but we're going to try to figure out all this information without the graph. So intercepts, let's do that. x-intercept is when y is 0. So x equals 0 minus 9, right? Absolute value of 0 is still 0. So negative 9. Comma 0, right? The x value is negative 9. The y value is 0. Y-intercept. Maybe there's two, right? But there can be more than one. Um, so we'll plug in 0 for x, absolute value of y minus 9, so add 9, so absolute value of y equals 9, so there's two solutions, right? It could be 9 or negative 9. Either of those would make it true. So there's two. So 0, 9, and 0, negative 9. The fact that we have a 9 and negative 9 kind of gives a hint that there's some sort of symmetry. Um, so let's check the symmetries. So let's do the symmetry about the x-axis. Right, and if we don't remember, we can go back up. x-axis, I went out of order, that's okay, is when we replace the y's. So if I plug in negative y, do I get the same function? So x equals the absolute value of negative y minus 9. And if I take the absolute value of a negative, it's the same thing. So yes, symmetric about the x-axis. And so then y-axis will do the same thing, but with x, right? So negative x equals absolute value of y minus 9. I'm going to move the negative to kind of solve for x. So x is negative absolute value of y, right? We can have negatives outside. Plus 9, this is not the same. So we're plugging in negative y, we're plugging in negative x, and then for the origin we do both, right? So negative x equals neg absolute value of negative y minus 9, right? We're just replacing both. So we get negative x is the absolute value of y minus 9, right? We divide by that negative and it looks like it's not going to work out. So no. I don't know why I did that, sorry. So it's only symmetric about the x-axis. Something could be symmetric about all three. Let's check out what it looks like. I'm going to count by threes. 3, 6, 9, 3, 6, 9, 3, 6, 9, 3, 6, 9. Three, six, nine. So negative 9, 0 would be here, and then 0, 9, 0, negative 9. And if you don't remember what um, absolute values look like, they look like this, right? They make little v-shapes. And so since we're doing x as a function of y, it ends up being the opposite. It ends up being a sideways version. And we can see the symmetry about the x-axis. So hopefully we're getting a refresher on some graphs as I go through these examples as well, because we will start graphing later. So let's do one final example. Um, let's find the area of this square. So if we want to find the area of the square, we need to find these sides. But how can we find these? So let's figure out what we do know. Um, we know the circle, Right, x squared plus y squared equals 16 would be the same as 4 squared for 16. Is a circle, right, with a radius of 4. So that might help us. I'm going to draw it right on the diagonal because then it, it uses the circle and it uses the square. So maybe that could help us figure out these other two sides. Um, they are equivalent, right? This is a square. Everything is um, the same size. So some of you might remember this special triangle, and you can go ahead and try that. 
Um, but if you don't remember the special triangle, I'll show you the long way of getting there. So these two sides are the same. If you don't believe me, I could draw this diagonal is also the same, right? And then these are the same, which means those are also the same. So let's go ahead and set up the Pythagorean theorem. If you remember those special triangles, that's a really nice shortcut. We'll, that's something we'll get into later. Um, if you don't know what a special triangle is, that is a topic we'll discuss later. Um, it's not something we necessarily know now. Um, so I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus x squared is 4 squared. So 2x squared is 16. Divide by 2. x squared is 8. Meaning x is the square root of 8. Or we've already done this one, 4 times 2 is 8, so 2 root 2. So we get 2 root 2. So if I want to find the area of the square, now maybe I'll double it, right? Because the side is actually 2x. So 2 root 2 times 2 would be 4 root 2, right? Just double it. And how do I find the area? It's just length times width, which is 4 root 2 times 4 root 2. Which we can kind of group things. So 4 times 4 is 16. Root 2 times root 2. They end up canceling out, and it makes it 2. And so we get 32 square units, whatever the units are. So that's how I envisioned it. Um, you might have envisioned it differently. So another th way we could have done this is you may have noticed um, the radius is 4. So the diameter would be 8. And then you could have done this triangle instead. So there's more than one way, and that's why it's really important to use pictures and visuals and kind of just do what makes sense to you. So thanks for putting up with all these videos, for making it all the way through. Um, draw a flower on your homework next to your name. Right, any flower. Draw a better one than me next to your name for an extra point um, on the chapter on the homework one. As a bonus for making it through all these really tedious videos. Um, so yeah, let me know if you have questions.